you're going to regret the decision of you know moving forward with nmt mm-hmm. so just make your right from the beginning right. welcome back to nemt van talks i'm jasmine and i'm monica and we're the owners of a non-emergency transportation company in california yeah. so today we are going to talk about NMT versus NEMT. I know. Now, I do want to add a little disclaimer, mm-hmm. right? Because we are in California and you know California is super, super special. So they put all <laughs> these things in place. So you may not be in a state that um, that emphasizes on the model of NMT. Mm-hmm. So we're just gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the, the two, difference yes you know i know that california says the standard for a lot of stuff so if these two terms are not in your state right as of right now it could be coming because so we're just, just getting out ahead is. of the game just yeah. in case it's not currently in your state yeah but if it is in your state if you have heard of nmt let me know and let me know what state you're in because mm-hmm. i'm curious yes yeah all right okay so let's talk about the two and the difference between the two so i think we should start with the definition okay yeah yep. so for an emt which is non-emergency medical transportation so non-emergency medical transportation is transportation provided by wheelchair ambulance a litter van for those who cannot use public or private transportation now when it comes to NMT which is non-medical transportation this is transportation provided by private pub or public vehicles for people who do not have any other way to get to their appointments yep so that's the difference so when we first started four years ago NMT was not something that we had ever heard of right no which one NMT NMT was something that we'd never heard of. Mm-hmm. We had already been um, contracted with state Medi-Cal yep. program. And out of nowhere, we get an email from one of our transportation mm-hmm. brokers and the state saying, hey, hello, there's yep. a difference between the, the two. two. Mm-hmm. So you need to go back into your Medi-Cal application portal yes. and select NMT if that is also something that you yes. offer. Mm-hmm. So we were like, what the heck? I never what? heard of it I before. Know. And, and we so. had to do some research and look more into it. And it was like, well, what's really the difference? Like, yeah. it, it sounds both similar. You're, you're still doing the same thing. You're still providing transportation. I wonder what was the point of, I, I know what it is. What? Well, you had transportation providers that were listed under NEMT, mm-hmm. but didn't have the vehicles um, oh yes there you go you got yeah. it they didn't have the vehicles to accommodate an emt so there's a difference so when you are a um nmt business owner your vehicles or um, most likely wheelchair vehicles litter van vehicles where you can accommodate individuals that are in wheelchair gurney and so there is a difference so you're right they had to distinguish the difference between the two because it's mm-hmm. based on the vehicles that you're utilizing to transport these individuals in NEMT is wheelchair gurney NMT is passenger sedan yes. type vehicles yes. they cannot accommodate um, wheelchair or gurney yes so when you are looking to get approved with your state they may ask you those questions and so based on you know the type of vehicles that you are utilizing um you may be approved for one and not the other Mm -hmm. um depending on the your your vehicle yeah Mm -hmm. oh but you know what i want to throw this in there i did have a client that has a wheelchair van Mm -hmm. and um, that client applied to become a vendor with state medicaid program but because his wheelchair van was Mm. not compliant they wanted to list him as in nmt Mm -hmm. and he wanted to hop on that opportunity just so he can be contracted contracted Mm -hmm. which I explained to him was the wrong thing to do because you're not going to be able to use your wheelchair van Mm -mm. and your wheelchair van that's I mean you got your wheelchair van because you wanted to make the money Mm -hmm. so if you're listed under NMT you're not able to do wheelchair or gurney trips Mm -hmm. um, even if you have a wheelchair or gurney vehicle so 
you know, I just told him, you know what, you need to go back. You need to see what disqualified your vehicle from yes. being qualified as a any MT vehicle and make the corrections because mm -hmm. in the end, you're going to regret the decision of, you know, moving forward with in MT. Mm -hmm. So just make your right from the well, beginning. Right. Yep. And just to add and, and clarify to with that statement. So. If, if he didn't go back to correct the findings in his application where he could provide any MT services, when working with Medi-Cal, he would not be able to submit any billing for wheelchair trips. So just to say if he decided to stick with an MT, he will only be able to bill for those particular transport. Even if he does have a wheelchair vehicle and he was like, well, I'm just going to do it anyway. No, you could not submit billing and be reimbursed for that trip because you're not registered the correct way. Yeah, and if yeah. you're working with the broker, they're not going to allow that either. Yeah. So, understanding your target audience. When you are just starting out in this mm -hmm. industry, it's important for you to really take a look at your community to see what the needs mm -hmm. are so that when you are, um, you know, putting together your business plan and really trying to figure out what services you're going to offer, whether it's NMT or NEMT, mm -hmm. um, your community will, you know, overall, um, set the tone yeah. for you know your operations, your operations and the services that right. you're going to incorporate mm -hmm. so yeah you want to say any nmt providers are um i i want to say they're not as profitable because we hear so many times with people saying oh you can't make money with your regular car da, da, da. but i know that not to be true yes. too because i've we've we've had several yes. consultation calls and we got um, we got people that are making really good money and have scaled their business 15, 16 yes. bands. Just and they ambulatory. only ambulatory. They only, their only focus is in MT. They only do ambulatory. They only have vehicles that can accommodate ambulatory and they prefer to do that. So you're right. Knowing your, know your market, knowing your target audience, knowing who you're trying to target will also help you in selecting. Okay your vehicles what type of vehicles you want to have mm -hmm. um it, it is helpful yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. um okay so regulatory compliance being compliant it's that's the, same. the same it's the same thing there's no difference the only difference is the type of vehicle you're using but you're still required and mandated to follow the same regulatory requirements yeah mm -hmm. insurance is the same insurance is the same um you know, the only difference that I could see is the cost, right? The cost. If you're starting with a sedan, it's going to be yeah. a whole lot cheaper versus a wheelchair or mm -hmm. a stretcher van, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the investment is definitely going to be different. But, of course, you will see higher profits with, you know, with the higher level of service. Of service so, you're providing. you know, overall, I think it's, it's very interesting mm -hmm. how they, you know, split the two in half yeah. and... You know, I, I don't wonder. Yeah, it is. It's, it is interesting. But hey, that's the state for you. Yeah. Is there a way or no way? You want to make sure that you completely understand the difference between the two. It is important um, as a business owner, a new business owner, that you're able to distinguish the difference between the two. Yeah. Um, but then that's also, you know, like we mentioned, your vehicles. But then there's also your driver's compliance. You know, your driver's and your vehicle compliance are ideal the same um, and you should look at the both the same and you need the same requirements whether you're doing in MT or any MT your drivers are required to have the same training to um, transport both yeah mm -hmm. and that's good that you say that I really want to talk about non-compliant drivers and non-compliant vehicles Ooh, yes girl. let's have that discussion let's 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 talk about it you guys check out this next video